Hi everyone, welcome back to the Linux Guy. Today I'm going to talk about SSH or Secure Shell, SFTP, which is Secure File Transfer Protocol, how to make an SSH tunnel, at least using a specific piece of software that makes it really easy, and why. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is SSH. So this stands for Secure Shell. It's built into Linux, and most Linux systems will actually run an SSH server automatically. Now, what is it? SSH basically allows you to have a terminal like this, a terminal emulator, but on a machine that you're actually not in front of. How does it work? Well, at the bare bones, you type SSH in the IP address. I have an SSH server set up here. The first time you log in, it's going to ask about authentication, and this is for security. You should really check this SHA-256 code with your actual machine. Now for demonstration purposes, this is a virtual machine that I intend to delete as soon as this is over. So I'm going to go ahead and type yes, and then you'll be asked for your password, and there we are. We are actually in our server. If you don't know the address of your server, you can always do ifconfig on the server, and you see there's our address. And you could do this actually sitting at the server before you go to SSH in. Another note, it's a good idea to have a static IP address set up for a server. But you might not have actually set up the server. You might have been told you can SSH into this server. And that's probably true from the most of you here. So, we're on here. Why should I care? Well, notably, I have access to all of my stuff. So, if I wanted to make something in my documents here, I could just go touch file.txt. And there is a new text file on my remote server. Not actually in front of me, but on my remote server. This is cool because now I can access it from anywhere that can access that server. This is not all it's useful for. It's actually good for things like debugging and finding problems with the server while without actually having to go to it. It makes your job or whatever you're trying to do on the server accessible anywhere the server is, which might be only on your local network or it might be over the internet, which means it could be available everywhere. That's pretty cool. Why SSH? Why Secure Shell? What's the purpose of it though? Well, it's encrypted, so everything between here and my server is safe from prying eyes because it's a secure shell. It's actually done over an encrypted connection. That's why it asks for that key right at the beginning and make sure you confirm the key. Now there's other ways of doing it using key files. I'm not going to cover that today. I'm going to cover the most basic setup of SSH. SSH lets you do all sorts of things. I can manipulate file permissions on the remote server. I can do all sorts of things administrative tasks. I can even use it to do everyday tasks, like writing a text file. I can do that through SSH if I really want to. But that's not really the best part about SSH. The best part about SSH is you can use it for other stuff. Notably, SFTP. Now what is SFTP? It stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol. Well, it uses SSH to transfer files. So right here, I'm going to touch newfile.txt and now we have newfile.txt right there. What if I want to put this on my remote server? Well, I can SFTP to 192.168.1.225 which is that server that I set up for this demonstration. You see that it's not asking me for that encryption key anymore because it knows it, it saved it. And it can authenticate it and show that it's there. I can ls, there's all the stuff. I want to put it in my downloads, so let's go into my downloads. And I will put newfile.txt. Now, it's on my remote server. There are actually programs that make this even easier, like FileZilla, and I'll show you FileZilla, which is probably what most people will be familiar with. You can just go ahead and type in your IP address or host name. You can type in your username and your password, and then finally the port. Now the default port for SSH is going to be 22, so I'm going to go ahead and put 22 there. But it could be something else depending on what you're connecting to. If it's not 22 though, someone will tell you what it is. Again, you'll be asked to trust the key. You can always trust the host or you can confirm it every time, whatever you like to do. And now I have both of them in actually a file browser and I can actually just drag and drop between the two now. And just like that. I've done a file transfer, and I can put that file over there. There we go. This is all done over SSH, so this is really awesome. This is probably the best way to move files around on a local network that exists, and it's actually probably one of the better ways to do it over the internet as well because of that encryption and the fact that it's free. You don't have to 
hire some third party to transfer your files. You can do it yourself, so long as you've got the bandwidth to actually do it. What if you wanted to log in as a different user? I'm not actually going to log in because I only have one user on that server, but I want to demonstrate this for people just in case they wanted to do that. So you would just do user at the IP address. The reason this is important is because if your username is not the same on the server as it is on your local machine, you'll have to specify that. And this is how you do that. If you're a Linux user, another thing that you should know about SFTP is that most of the file browsers that are out there can actually directly connect to it. So let's go ahead and go to SFTP colon forward forward slash like this. And there's our IP address. So we'll do sftp colon forward slash forward slash. We'll put our IP address or host name slash home slash the Linux guy. That's where our user is. For some reason, your user isn't is somewhere else or you wanted a different folder, you can put whatever folder you want. We'll go ahead and hit enter. It'll ask us to authenticate. And once we have our username and password in there, we can get connect. And now you can see it's actually integrated right into our file browser. Now this is the Nautilus file browser, but most Linux file browsers actually can do this. So now my server is just like any other file location on my computer, but it's all over SFTP. I could even bookmark this if I wanted to for quick access so I don't have to go to other locations and type that long thing in every time I want to get onto it. This is a real handy thing, even just on a really small scale. Just to share between two people, this is useful, but if you're in a big organization, it's something you should definitely consider utilizing if you're really all about self-hosting and keeping things locally stored. All right, and that's about it to talk about SSH, and I talked about SFTP as well, which is directly related to SSH. Thanks for watching The Linux Guy. Let us know what you think at the bottom. Make sure to find us on Library, and we'll see you in the next one.